A lot of people loved what Dan Patrick had to say. We got a huge response. A lot of people really, really hated it. So we thought we'd talk about it a little more with one of the wisest people we know, Fox Senior Political Analyst Britt Hume joins us tonight. Britt, thanks so much for coming on. What did you make of that? What was your view of it? Well, I think he's essentially saying something that's not terribly different from what the president and Governor Cuomo have been saying, which is that this, what we're living in now, this circumstance as we try to beat this virus, is not sustainable. That the country, the utter collapse of the country's economy, which you know many think will happen if this goes on much longer, is an intolerable result. And that he is saying, for his own part, that he'd be willing to take a risk um, uh, of getting the disease, uh, if that's what it took to allow the economy to move forward. And he said that because he's late in life, you know, that he'd be perhaps more willing than he might have been at a younger age, which seems to me to be an entirely yes. reasonable viewpoint. But there we are. You know, we don't shut down the economy to save every single life that's threatened by a, a widespread disease. We just don't. Why do you think saying that, I mean, what you're saying is factually true. There's no precedent for doing that. And we faced a, a lot of epidemics over the years. I'm not even taking position on where we ought to go next. But just stating that out loud, why do you think that enrages so many people? Sincerely. Well, I, don't, I can't know that. I can't read the minds of people I, I don't know. But there's one thing I do suspect in all of this in terms of the reactions to it. We are living in a country which, in which people's reactions to nearly everything have something to do when you drill down with the, how they feel about Donald Trump. If you are wondering what Fox News is willing to sacrifice in its blind deference to Trump, the answer is apparently our grandparents. This is Fox's senior political analyst, Britt Hume, validating the widely panned opinion from Texas's Republican Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick only days ago, where he said that those 70 and older should be willing to sacrifice themselves for the economy. Tucker, no one reached out to me and said, uh, as a senior citizen, uh, are you willing to take a chance on your survival in exchange for keeping the America that all America loves for your children and grandchildren? And if that's the exchange, I'm all in. Um, and that doesn't make me noble or brave or anything like that. I just think there are lots of grandparents out there in this country like me, I have six grandchildren, that what we all care about and what we love more than anything are those children. And I want to you know, live smart and, uh, and, and see through this, but I don't want the whole country to be sacrificed. That's the extent to which they need the stock market back up because we have an election coming up and God forbid Trump can't ramble on about his record economy, the best economy in the history of the world. I mean, he's not saying it, but many people are. Because whereas the actual experts have been breathlessly advocating for social distancing until we can finally manage to flatten the curve, which thus far the United States has fallen implausibly short of doing, Trump has come out and said basically that enough is enough and we've done what we could, but it's time to open the country back up. Let's go to work. Our country wasn't built to be shut down. This is not a country that was built for this. It was not built to be shut down. Who when everything we're doing. Who I just thought it was a beautiful time. Because clearly, getting to church on Easter this year is gonna be more important than surviving to see the next one. But it doesn't matter because once Trump speaks, then his loyal mouthpieces blindly follow, parroting the cultish idea that they're willing to die to give up their lives because it's been two weeks and we need to see some gains in the Dow. I would rather have my children stay home and all of us who are over 50 go in and keep this economy going and working even if we all get sick, I'd rather die than kill the country because it's not the economy that's dying. It's the country. Uh, Dr. Hotez said that the best estimate right now of the mortality rate here in the United States is 0.7 or 0.8 percent, as in less than 1 percent. Now, every life matters, and you don't want to minimize any of them, but when the mortality rate is that low, what is the balance? Now, keep in mind, this isn't some selfless act of sacrifice by these people, because while they might be older, Britt Hume and Glenn Beck and Ed Henry aren't the ones at risk in this scenario. They're not the ones that are going to die. They are millionaires. They can afford afford to stay home in their big houses with plenty of food and no need to go outside for anything. It's their own audience who's at risk. People who might have to show up at their jobs, at supermarkets, or the post office or sanitation departments. People who live in small apartments with others, those who have to leave their houses for food for their families. 
those are the people who would actually suffer at the hands of these noble calls for sacrifice from Republican officials and Fox News personalities. There is a reason that no one who isn't a millionaire is calling for human sacrifice. But despite all of this, even if we did open the country back up and just said screw it, it still wouldn't help. If we just let the virus spread, people would still get sick. And so either you'd have companies operating at a fraction of their capacity anyway because half their office is on ventilators, or they'd be at work spreading the virus to everyone else. Our healthcare system and hospitals already don't have the capacity to serve everyone, and that's with social distancing measures in place. If we remove them, our healthcare system would collapse. This wouldn't be business as usual. You would have mass deaths, a virus spreading rapidly across the population with no end in sight, and an economy that's awful anyway. This isn't some brilliant economic stimulus plan by Republicans and Fox News. It's a death sentence to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Americans, to our healthcare system as we know it, and to our economy. It is a Hail Mary that serves only the purpose of propping up the markets so the president isn't deprived of a talking point heading into November. So let's not pretend that it serves anyone except one single person, Donald Trump.